So one of our newer members posted a question in the group that I thought would be worth exploring today, which centers around somebody she met in a dance class. Now he happens to be a bit older than her. And he, um, I'm not sure exactly how he may have gotten her contact information, but he started to send some uh, information to her, um, memes and that sort of thing. And he, he made a request to ask her out on a date. And so they went out on a date. Now, I'm just going to make an assumption here to, to guess that this man is probably in his 50s or 60s. Again, I'm just guessing here um, because the actual age wasn't given. So during the date, she noticed that he seemed a bit socially awkward. And it turns out that they have a mutual friend, a roommate of hers uh, in the past. And um, he made a sexual reference between the two of them. And she was very off-putting by that, you know, and it was, she expressed that this was a disrespectful comment, which I think was very appropriate on her part. And the question is, why would men do that? So <laughs> I'm thinking back now to when I went through a divorce, and this was a decade and a half ago, or well, well over a decade and a half ago. Um, the world has changed dramatically for, for those of us that were either baby boomers or early Gen Xers, um, the way we met people in the world versus today with the advent of technology. Now, you might be going, well, how does this apply to that? Well, I think, you know, when you, when you look at how we met people in the past and how we interacted with the people in the past, and what I'm really talking about is 30 plus years ago, the world has changed significantly because of technology, because of our little smartphones and whatnot. We now have access to people in ways we didn't have before. Okay, again, how does this relate? Well, I think people are socially awkward, certainly those of us who are baby boomers or early Gen Xers, because we aren't really comfortable with uh, communication via technology. Now, I recognize that what happened in this particular case was a uh, inner, you know, face-to-face -face interaction. But we, we've been bombarded with information in such ways that we were never used to before, whether it's social media, whether it's just the bombardment of television, you know, with uh, news channels and such like that. So I think human beings have become rather socially awkward, even if they're not socially awkward. In addition, there's been a big change in the way men view women. That's right, there's been a big change in the way men view women. I think the beginning of the feminist movement and certainly the advent of birth control has changed how men view women. Now, you might be thinking, okay, what's going on here? Well, with the respects to the feminist movement, I want to just take us back maybe 60, 70 years ago. Men predominantly in the hierarchy, if you will, were more predominant than women because they were the primary breadwinners uh, in relationships. And thankfully now, women are no longer as dependent upon men as they were in the past, number, number one. Number two, with birth control, there isn't the, the ability to have casual sex these days, excuse me, casual sex these days, makes it the, the, the respect men have for women, I think, in the past was a bit different than today because of the ability to have casual sex with a person without any consequence of, you know, a nine-month delivery happening, okay? So with that, I do believe on some level men have value women less than they did maybe in the 50s, okay? Now, I'm just, this is my hypothesis. I'm not suggesting this as a fact. This is my perception. So when you take socially awkward people that aren't familiar with technology and then, and, and the, not just familiar with technology, but the bombardment of technology which is very socially awkward for people that may not have experienced that in their previous dating life. And then a slight disrespect for women these days, it's understandable why so many men might be a bit crass when it comes to women. In this particular case, his sexual innuendo that he shared to this person. Now, she's asking me whether or not she should give this guy a chance. Well, I certainly do believe that by establishing a boundary, 
with this person is a very healthy thing to do. And I get the sense that she established a boundary. This, but this comes back to, are you, do you want to invest in a person that isn't aligned to who you are and what you want? So let's just give him the benefit of doubt. You just had a momentary faux pas. Folks, let me just tell you something. I have been, uh, I have experienced something similar to him. In other words, I've gone on first dates with women and I have probably dropped some sexual innuendos. Now, in some ways, the reason why I was doing it was testing, you know, there's the disrespect of women, but there's also testing women on their sexual boundaries. And I've been slapped down for that. So I am guilty of what he has done to some degree. And most men are guilty of that to some degree. Because again, it's not as if men haven't tested women's sexual boundaries. That happened even pre-birth control. It's just when you add socially awkwardness the, the world is somewhat socially awkward these days. And if a person is also socially awkward, you know, they might have Asperger's, they might have some autistic, you know, they might have some traumas, you know, in their lives that might cause them that. I think testing boundaries is something men do on a sexual level. So, you know, and I'll be candid with you, even you know, to some degree, even in my own relationship, I tested some sexual boundaries early on. Thankfully, she, you know, didn't make a mountain out of a molehill <laughs> to some degree. And, and the fact that she established those boundaries allowed me to take a step back and say, you know what, I really value this person because she has such healthy boundaries. I'm here to say, ladies, it is important that you establish your standards early on in the dating process and, and within those standards establishes the boundaries. Now, I like the way Brene Brown uh, illustrates boundaries as what's okay and what's not okay for me. What's okay and what's not okay for me. Um, and so part of the whole dating process is a, 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 testing of boundaries for both men and women alike. Women test men's boundaries, men test women's boundaries. At the end of the day, what's critically important is are you two on the same page? And just like what I teach in my private coaching is, it's interesting, what I teach in my private coaching is exactly the way my relationship with Marie was established. We laid our cards on the table very quickly. We operated from a place of radical honesty. Now, while Marie intuitively knew all this, many women don't know how to do this. That's why they come to a coach like myself. So I can, I can help prepare you to do the things that you may not have been trained because in some ways, you know, we're, we're all socially awkward in the dating, mating, and relating realm because we don't know what those standards are anymore. And quite frankly, and listen, I, I interview lots of women per week, per month uh, for my coaching program. And they all come to me saying the same thing. Jonathan, I know what I want. I know what I want. I know what I want in the form of a relationship. And then they go through this proprietary coaching program I created. And can you guess what they say every single time? I didn't know what I wanted. Why didn't they teach me this in school? Why didn't my parents teach me this? Folks, Without clarity on the type of relationship that you seek, and again, you all think this, but it, until you actually get it from the baseline level, because if you don't know the way a relationship works, we all, we've been indoctrinated to believe that chemistry equals relationship success, and that's not the case. And you wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be here in this group if you really believe that, and if you still believe that, let me just tell you, let me dispel this myth. It is not the case. Being aligned on your values, being aligned on your lifestyle, and more importantly, be aligned on emotional maturity requires you to become a detective. In fact, what I teach in my coaching is like you being your own matchmaker. The matchmaker's job is to vet the person before they put the two people together. They vet both people before they put them together. Well, these days we have to become our own matchmaker to find someone that you're truly aligned with. And, you know, I say this a bit humbly, but also um, a bit braggadocious. I am so incredibly grateful I found a partner that we're very aligned because we each did the work in advance to get to this place of clarity. 
And thankfully, because of that, I believe we're a magnetic attractor for one another. So if you need help with that, you know, schedule a discovery call with me. Uh, that's my area of expertise. But more importantly, recognize that testing boundaries, men, and, men will test a woman's boundaries sexually, a woman tests boundaries um, <laughs> emotionally speaking. I think women tend to test men's boundaries in the area of communication, and men tend to uh, test women's boundaries in the area of sex. Okay, so do you give this guy a second chance? Yeah, you know, you really have nothing to lose by, you know, you could take offense or you can take umbrage to what happened. And certainly we can all criticize him and he's crude and he's disrespectful and he's, he's a piece of trash. Or you can simply say, you know what? He's just a guy doing a guy thing. That's what guys do. Be grateful that we have a sexual desire for you because a lot of guys in midlife don't have that. And, you know, Go out one more time. See if you actually mesh to one another. However, I only recommend that if you're going to explore a relationship with someone, make sure that you've done the vetting to determine do you share the same values, are, are your lifestyles blendable, and more importantly, is this person emotionally mature enough to actually be in partnership with you? And the sooner you do that, the better, because what you don't want to end up is in a relationship that fizzles out and yet you've given your heart to someone and that stings even more. All right. Hey folks, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below if this resonated with you. If you have something to share, I'd like to hear about it. As always, if you find value in the group, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Uh, send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button to join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love. There's a teddy bear. <laughs> Um, because we can all use, hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye now. Bye.